Hey, it's some old guy coding again today, and hey, look what we got on the desktop here. It's a, it's another kit. I ordered this one off of Amazon, uh, something from China that took about a month and a half to get here or more. That's an hourglass kit, and I will uh, um, put a link up on top there. So we have a nice little uh, board here. I'm not sure what the features are of this yet. Um, so, you know, LEDs all over there, a little microprocessor, I think, you know, and some other parts. So. Let's see what we got in the bag. We've got a uh, schematic. Oops. And um, looks like uh, the LEDs are, are ganged into groups here, so it's probably going to be less interesting, less amazing than I was hoping. So we'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and get the rest of the parts out here. And the first thing is obvious. Ooh, it was inspected. Look at that. All right, we got a chip socket. We got a ton of LEDs. Got uh, this little guy with bent legs. A little power connector. A little switch. A little header. Ooh, and a button. Woohoo! Whoops, there's a cap right there. Capacitor, and uh, I think the rest are all LEDs, I think. So let's go ahead and move all that stuff over there. There we go. So there's the back of the card. There's the front. So let's get soldering. I think the soldering iron is uh, warmed up. Aha, uh -huh, look at that. We got a diagram on the back even. Maybe that will help. So I don't have to look it up online. So with the chip oriented in this direction, we will be installing the LEDs. with the flat side facing down, and there is a flat side on here. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see. Especially if the LED is clear, it doesn't make it any easier. So it looks like the flat side is on the short leg. <laughs> so the long legs go into the square pad here, it looks like, and I believe that's the way it normally is. So let's see if we can focus. Focus, there, boy. All right, so the long legs go into the square pad. So we'll just start planting these guys in here. And it looks like, um, there we go. Get them all the way in. Long lead to the uh, square side. Well, there they are all in, and uh, unless I've missed something, which I don't think I have, I apparently have two spare LEDs here, which is kind of nice, just in case, you know, something goes bad. So let's go ahead and get those guys soldered in, and let's see, I got this uh, little card from DIYmall.com here. I think what we're going to do is I'm just going to slip this guy out, hold that card on there, maybe. Flip it over. There we go. And then with the support of the table, we'll get all these tacked in on uh, on one side. Make sure that they're all seated okay, of course. So let's go ahead and move the camera back there a little bit. and put that chip socket in next. I'll straighten the pins out on that. Yeah, 
And remember that little square pin, uh, square uh, fabbed is pin one, and we've got this little divot up here in the uh, IC uh, drawing, and that should match the little divot that's uh, right in the socket here. Go ahead and solder uh, opposite corners. And we'll just make sure that that thing is fully seated here. Looks like I can push down on this side a little bit. And we'll push down on that side a little bit. There. Yep, that looks better. Double check the orientation to make sure it's right. <clears throat> And we'll go go ahead and solder some uh, solder the rest of the pins here. So what other parts do we have sitting here? We have a little uh, switch, little slider switch here. It's an interesting tiny little part, huh? Personally, I'm not a big fan of slider switches. They they don't seem as durable as I would like. But it looks like oh, looks like that switch goes right on over here. That fit very nicely. <clears throat> so we're going to start by soldering the two uh, pins for the case, and then we'll solder the electrical pins. So these two outside pins uh, support the uh, uh, metal case that's on there. And then we'll double check to make sure that things are seated all the way. And I think they are. Yep. So we can go ahead and finish soldering those electrical pins in there. Do we have we have a chip with some bent leads here I suppose we could insert that before it gets any more bent up Let's see if we can straighten those guys out a little bit and get them in position for the socket the pins on an IC like this uh, or a chip are the kind of metal that uh, they're stiff and they don't take a lot of bending. You can bend them a couple of times, but you don't want to bend them too far because they will uh, eventually snap off on you. So there's the little divot right there. And we want the little divot in the chip to go that same direction. Right there. Looks like all the pins are going into the socket, so we'll go ahead and press that guy down. And we have that part out of the way. Next, there's a little tiny button we need to solder on. So here's the little button. We're going to go ahead and solder that in here the way the diagram shows. I think it will only fit one way. The dimensions are, it's not a square, it's a kind of a rectangle arrangement, so the, uh, it will only fit in one, one orientation. That guy's in. Let's go ahead and solder him down. Okay. 
looks good. And let's see what else do we have here. We have this little ceramic capacitor that I thought was part of this. So let's take a look at the diagram. This thing certainly goes in here, so we might as well do that while we have it. Solder that header in. So let's start out with uh, 5 volts. I would think that that would be fairly safe. Looks like the top one is VCC here and the bottom one is ground. So we'll give that a try. So orange will be VCC. And yellow will be the ground. So let's power it up and do a smoke check, huh? I've got a PC power supply back here that has a little breakout board on it so we can get at the voltages. And there's the power. And look at that. Well, that is cool. Oh. I thought they were ganged together, but no, they're matrixed. They're matrixed together. That's what's going on. So they do have control over every single one individually. So that's kind of cool. Let's go, what's the button do? Does it just reset it? Well, it makes it uh, change modes. It goes faster or slower. It's a little bit faster, I think. Really fast. Okay, so it's probably just uh, as long as the switch is down, it's probably reading and uh, incrementing a, a value out there. That's the timer, or decreasing it rather. Oh, and then we wrap around to the other side. And this little thing doesn't seem to do a heck of a lot. It's supposed to turn it on and off, or I thought. I don't see any bridges back there. I bet you it turns it on and off from the uh, power jack here is what it does. And since I don't have a, a guy to fit that, then uh, there we are. So we got a little timer going. That's actually cooler than I thought it was going to be. I like it. Not terribly useful. I mean, if we could uh, get in there and adjust the code maybe to be... Uh, a specific timer, but we don't have a buzzer on the end of it anyway, but it's still something interesting to look at and all the LEDs seem to be working. It's very nice. Very interesting. Well, that was kind of a fun little build with a lot of LEDs in it. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll build a little case or something for this and we'll throw it up on a, a shelf. Um, some of the LEDs seem a little brighter than others, but yeah, that's probably be to be expected. I don't know. They're probably not all perfectly level on the board. There's probably some focusing issues, you know, but cool. I was kind of thinking maybe there'd be a button to make it go the other direction, but uh, that doesn't seem to be true. So, thanks for watching.